Okay, we live. Hi, Abby. Hi, Sophie. Hi, Hi everyone. I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. Good. I am very, very good. good. All right. So today we have a question. Yeah. Okay. Here's a question. Let me read it. The question is, I am depressed and unhappy. What can I do about it as I do not want to take antidepressants? It's a great question. Yeah. Oh, and Abby, while I'm thinking of it, could you make sure underneath the video you put the link for yes. people to use to uh, ask us questions anonymously? Yes, absolutely. Everyone, <laughs> I'm going to post underneath the link, just like Sophie said, you can go there and you'll see a little section where you can post your question. You, it, you have to put your name in the box, but we won't say your name here in this space. So if you have questions, we're happy to answer on Mondays. So I'm doing that now. That's why okay, you're seeing great. me looking down. But you All right. So the question, I'm depressed and unhappy, right? Uh, it's so common to feel down, right? Abby, don't you feel down? Uh -huh. Oh gosh. I, it, it is yes. very common. So if you don't recognize yourself in that question, I don't know. It, <laughs> I'm very envious because I had to deal with a feeling of depression and feeling down and unhappy, right? So it's yeah, like, me too. here's the thing. The first thing is you have to tell the truth about it because it's like a cold. You know, when you have a cold, it's very common, right? But if you don't do anything about it, it can, it won't always, but it can go all the way to lung problems and pneumonia and yeah. whatever, mm -hmm. right? So you have to deal with it. Yes. Um, you know, the loneliness is a, a really a condition that is a very much present in our culture, right? More and more and more in spite of all the social media and all the way we have to communicate. Loneliness is an enormous thing. You know, I read a survey that says one in three people in America feel lonely. Wow. One in three, it's a lot, right? Wow, it, it's and a loneliness lot. loneliness makes you depressed, right? Yes. It makes you feel down. Anxiety makes you lonely and then loneliness makes you feel depressed. Yes. Right? Now, loneliness are people that often blame themselves, right? Mm, they attribute failures to themselves, like what's wrong with me? And the people that are not lonely, even if they have to confront a failure or something, they, they look for outside of themselves what didn't work. That's interesting. Yeah, yep, that makes yeah. total sense. Yeah. So when one is depressed or unhappy, right? What what is the experience? Well, we irritable sometimes, mm -hmm. very low energy. Yes. You can lack confidence, beating yourself down, self-criticism. Isolating. Yeah. Feeling lonely, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and then, you know, compensating by eating or drinking or smoking or... Yes. The whole thing, right? Any kind of distractions, and, even yeah. television or whatever. Yes. We have lots yes. Of social media. Being on series. Yes. <laughs> Scrolling Instagram will get yeah. me fast. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. And there is questions like, uh, what's wrong with me? Yes. What is the point? There is no point. I hate this life. I hate people. People are so violent, so ugly. And what's the point? Yeah. Right? All right. Okay. So now the, the first thing and the question is because I do not want to take antidepressant, right? Mm. There is a, a one out of four Americans that take antidepressant pills. I believe That's that. Absolutely. Right? Okay. And there are some people that need them. They the pathologically depressed people but that is very small you know the, the, there is very few people that are pathologically in need of antidepressants mm. right? the rest is just like we don't know how to cope with it mm -hmm. okay so there is a way there is a way to deal with it that we're going to give you now okay so mm -hmm. don't go to the antidepressant pills except if you pathologically mentally unwell mm -hmm. okay? 
So, um, you know, because the antidepressant peers have a lot of side effects, right? If you go on Google and see uh, side effects of antidepressants, you will be stunned. And also it's designed to make you numb, mm. right? So you can't be numb and practice awareness. I mean, that is a... <laughs> Mm -hmm. That is a conundrum. That's not possible, right? So the people that are in this group listening to us, Abby, are people that are committed to awareness, elevation of consciousness. So don't go and numb yourself, right? Except if you're sick. Okay. So here's the good news. I give it straight away, right? It can be helped. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> There's a solution. Right. <laughs> so first step. You need to know that the primal desire of all human beings is to be happy, mm. right? And happiness depends on our thoughts about what is happening, right? So happiness is tied to the outside world. That's why it fluctuates so much, mm. right? Are you thinking about something, Abby? I can no, see. No, I just went to <laughs> check to see if we had comments. I have the thing open. <laughs> I saw your eyes were not as sharp. My <laughs> eyes do a quick. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry, everyone. I'm here. I was just checking the comments section. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So happiness depends on the thoughts you're having about what is happening in the exterior, external world. Hmm. Okay. Suffering is exactly the same. Suffering depends on the thought you believe about what is happening in the external world. So happiness and feeling down and depressed, mm. suffering comes from the same place. The thoughts you're wow. having that you're believing or not. So if you are causing depression for yourself by believing some very intense thoughts that work against yourself you can do exactly the same by believing other thoughts that will work for you so that's the first thing you need to be the originator here that's a very good news right because yes. if depression was something that happened to you then you will be a victim and you couldn't do anything right yeah right so that's the first very good news might not sound like good news to some people but it's very very good news we can do something about what thought we believe yeah that now, is really powerful yeah between happiness and suffering there is a very thin line very mm -hmm. very thin right you know in everyday life abby when we get angry we say i was so mad at this person if you allow yourself to get mad at people again and again and again and again and again and again, you will go to insanity hmm. because it's a very thin life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's it's a, you've got to to be aware of that line. Yes. If you hear and not do anything about being down and depressed and unhappy, it will go into a downward spiral mm. until you you reach a point where you need the, it's pathological right mm -hmm. there will be a point of no return there is always a point of no return if you throw tantrums all the time i know somebody that throws tantrums as a way of being she, she does that so often, enormous tantrums, <laughs> and it is not a child. <laughs> yep. You get attention, you throw people away from you, you get lonely, and one day you won't be able to cross the line back. Mm. And people will start saying, well, she's crazy. Right? So being aware... We have a sin in the matter, and there is a very fine line not to cross. Mm. Now, the first question, which is the most confronting and as often also the most freeing, mm. is 
are you doing depression and, and happiness as a way to avoid something? Mm. As a way to avoid some responsibility? Does it pay to be depressed and happy, sick? Do you get what I call a false pleasure out of believing the thought I'm depressed? You know, it's a false pleasure, right? Because you do get attention, but it's like a sickly pleasure, right? Do you identify with that thought? I am depressed. Mm. I, who is the I that is depressed? I am unhappy. If you are, you're creating a trap. You were going to say something, Abby? No, I just, this, this question specifically altered my whole life, actually. When I was, before I was working with you and I was doing the master course with you, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I got to a point. Yeah. You have to share. Yeah, we were like deep in the sessions. We were in like session nine or something. And I was like, yeah, it's really great. Like I get my ego, but I still feel really depressed. And you were like, what are you basically asked me, like, what are you avoiding in life? Like, wh how are you using depression? And I realized that I was afraid of really living my life, like actually being alive in my life and having a full life. I was afraid. So it was easier for me to identify with something I was told when I was really young, you have depression. I was really young. I was 16 or 15. And it was easier for me to pull myself back from life, to isolate myself, to put myself in a little bubble than it was to just slowly, it took time, right? But just slowly start putting my foot out the door into life and start actually living. And that was the beginning, that question really was the beginning for me of like, oh, I don't actually have to choose this anymore. No, I really actually you don't. don't have to believe that thought and identify with that thought. Yeah. You have a low level energy. Yes. Right. It's very different to have it versus to be it. It is very different because now I can notice my energy level and I can be responsible for it now. But it took time. I mean, it took years to practice it, but it's a totally different thing to have, be responsible for my energy. Well, there is more. It doesn't have to take years. Ah, it okay. It took me years. Moment. It doesn't have to take yeah. you years. <laughs> so we know the thoughts are creating the emotions, right? It's not that you have an emotion and then you have a thought. No, you have a thought and then the emotion ensued, right? So the moment you recognize your thoughts, you start by creating a gap and you don't have to believe them right mm -hmm. so if you recognize the thought i'm depressed i'm unhappy you recognize it as a thought and you start questioning it and not identifying with it you will start the moment you stop believing them you will be left with the emotion they don't go away that much right but the emotions then you can take the time to experience them yeah and they, and they shift right because you will not be giving power and fuel to the emotion by your thinking mm. right so you imagine your thinking i'm depressed fuels your emotion it's just like food yay <laughs> yeah right? yes. so if you stop believing the thought i'm depressed and you stay with your emotion, the emotions will not have food anymore mm. and they can, they will disappear, right? Mm. So do not fuel your emotion by believing your thoughts. Mm. Okay. Now yeah, that really reminds me of what you say, Sophie, about um, like really allowing yourself to go all the way through an emotion instead of getting stuck in it, in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because the experience of an emotion is not that bad. Your heart race, you have cramp in your stomach or you sweat or you uh, have a constriction in your throat, but that is totally tolerable. Mm -hmm. It is the thought plus the emotion and the two feeding each other with no consciousness whatsoever. That is intolerable, right? Right. The loop, the loop of yeah. it. Yeah, totally. 
yeah. yeah. So then the question, and I did the work on myself and it was mm. so amazing, right? Because I dealt with it. Like I, mm. you know, I, I had a, a difficult life, I think, but compared to many others, not more difficult than many others, but I've had quite an eventful life. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, there is, there was a pattern of unhappiness and feeling depressed mm -hmm. and feeling lonely and all that. And then I ask myself and I ask everybody that is listening to this call to ask himself, am I addicted to unhappiness and depression? Is mm -hmm. there an addiction here? Is there a habit? Is it a habit that I'm actually feeding? Because if I look at my life, it goes up and down feeling depressed, feeling happy, feeling depressed, feeling happy, right? Mm. Do I create dramas to feed my habit of feeling unhappy and depressed? Right? I really said, what, why is, is there a trend in my life? Why do mm. I deal with feeling down and depressed, right? And I discovered that uh, when I was about um, 13 or 14, or maybe 10, I don't know, but between 10 and 14, I must have had a bad day or whatever, but I went to my bed crying and feeling sad. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the only time both my parents came and wanted to make me feel better, which I don't have any other memory of that ever happening, right? So I'm now in my bed, just really miserable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my mother and my father are there. And then my father, who was very protective, and he said, but darling, don't be sad. You know you're my favorite. Uh-oh. <laughs> to this day, I remember my surprise. I must wow. have been uh, complaining about my brother or sister. I remember my surprise, my delight. Like, yeah, me. <laughs> that did it. That worked, right? Me, me, glee, like a total satisfaction. Wow. Wow. Right? I, to this day, I remember my reaction. Hmm. Wow. And I created my addiction right there and then. When life doesn't go the way I want it to go. When I hit a bump in the road. Oh, yes. I go back to being miserable. Wow. Wow. That's yep. powerful, Sophie. Yep. It triggered in me a very similar memory, actually. I have a very similar memory. You do? I do, and, yeah. And we train our children, right? Yes. If they're unhappy or miserable, we give them so much love. Mm-hmm. Wow. What about not giving them that much love then, but giving them love when they're really happy? <laughs> Maybe wow. they will create a habit of when they're happy. Yeah. Oh my God, Sophie, this is creating like a cascade of like, <laughs> um, wow, know. that's, yeah. I know. Because I know. then oh, like, yeah. I can see how I then do that to myself. Like, oh, I'm sad. Oh, I'll give myself a cookie, right? Yeah. I'm sad, yeah. so I get a cookie, right? Yeah. Yeah. But then inevitably that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with cookies. Cookies are awesome. Have cookies, but I will create for myself a cascade of like trying to make myself feel better in ways mm -hmm. that actually end up making me feel worse instead yes. of yes, actually yes. just taking care of myself every single yeah. day and yes. loving myself every day and showing up every day. Right. It's an addiction, you know? Yes. It's, it's totally, yeah. it's so interesting. Yeah. What a, Yes, I can see how I've internalized that, you know, someone yeah, you created a habit, that. right? You, you created a habit. And, and yeah. many, many of us that have a pattern of feeling down and miserable and depressed have created at one point a pattern that when an addiction, a habit, and we're using it, there is this kind of sickly pleasure in being unhappy. I mean, it's not pleasure, it's false pleasure. Yeah, in being unhappy and depressed. Yep. Right? Totally. All right. So the moment you have enough courage to become aware that you've created the system, it will dissolve it, right? Because if you believe the thought, I'm unhappy, I'm miserable, and you have the emotions, and you don't bring awareness to the system, 
how the system stays in place is by lack of awareness. It stays around because there is a lack of awareness, right? So yeah. you need to, if you can't do it by yourself, you need to sit down to some, with somebody and say, okay, let me take on the possibility that I'm actually addicted to the thought because I get away with something. Mm-hmm. Okay, And then you have to tell the truth. Ooh, okay. that takes courage. Yeah, it does. Okay, but then you're free, right? Then you're free. Ah. Oh my God, right? yeah. So then, okay. then your habit will kick back in because it's a habit. So yes. that is what takes year. Yes. Okay. Or, or not years, but months. Yes, but yes. That to, is, to that's the part. Reconstruct the habit. But once you know you have a habit, every time it kicks in, it takes you a few seconds to get it. Yes. Okay. So let's say you know when you put it together you know you're responsible for it you know you believe the thought you know when you did it you know it's a indulgence fine in the moment you notice it having a miserable attack an attack of misery (laughs) for me it's more than misery i'm miserable (laughs) more than depressed right it's just like miserable yes it's that it's that greek drama it's i know i know oh i'm miserable (laughs) (laughs) all right so the once you have an attack right then you have to stop straight away and say okay what is the trigger what triggered it there is always 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 something that triggers it i don't care if it's a thought something somebody said or didn't say something that happened failure uh there is always a trigger point you need to find the bump you hit on in the road right so for example, one day I failed at something, right? But I'm very highly trained. So I I just said, oh, well, failure doesn't mean anything and all that. But ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yes, failure doesn't mean anything. I can sound really good. But what I made it mean was, okay, it's over. I folded. I refused to fight. I didn't take a stand. I gave up. Yes. Right. And that was what you're saying more than the failure. It was a giving up. I think that's so powerful what you're saying there, because it's really easy to sort of bypass things and be like, oh, well, I know better. You know, it's so easy. But the truth usually is a little marble. It's a little (laughs) pebble in there, you know, (laughs) and I've learned also um, in doing this work is that what I do is I take myself back to the most heightened version, like the climactic feeling of like, Ooh, that doesn't feel good. And usually it's something a little before that, like you kind of keep going back, but how did I feel before that? But then how did I feel before that? Uh Aha, there it is. It's usually something little before the big. Or something you say is little, right? Right. Something that seems little. Something that, you know. Yeah, Yeah. 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 So Get back to the to the bump in the road. Yeah. Because there is something that you did with that, right? If you give up your dream, if you stop mm-hmm. taking a stand, mm-hmm. you made it mean something, you, you know, folded, right? That mostly. So identify it and always awareness being the ultimate power, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So once you know what happened, you can be responsible for everything around it. And you will get that your feeling of powerlessness Mm. didn't happen to you. You probably folded, gave up on something, a dream, a stand. Wow. Self-criticized, you know, like uh, when I get miserable, um, I uh, look at everybody else in the world saying, oh, well, they're doing so well. I am so bad. I am really, <laughs> yeah. I'm really like, I have nothing to give yep. to the world. Right? Yes. And then validation all the way. <laughs> yes. 
Oh my gosh. I relate very much. I came to the call today with a weird feeling and this call really helped me. <laughs> I it really did. I had a, like a weird moment yesterday and I was able to, this call helped me like, oh, I made it mean that I wasn't as good as everybody else and everybody yeah. else is better than me and cooler yeah. than me, you know, yeah. and it's and just, happier than me. And, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Just a little. And, yeah. The coping with life much, much better. <laughs> yep. Yes, All exactly. Right. So then, then you have you experience this kind of freedom, right? And that's where the creation comes, right? So yes. you want to gather information, be clear on what you gave up, start, you know, talking to people. I, I, you know, go to friends and people I trust because yes. you know if you're whole, don't listen to yourself. You're the person that put you in the hole in the first place. Oh my gosh, yes. It's the to somebody else. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and and then you will see, do you still want to give up instead of giving up? Choose to stop doing what you did, or is there another way? Or you know, just then awareness will be there. And everybody's so powerful, right? You can then choose what you want to do about it. Yeah. But that is for most people how to deal with feeling miserable, depressed, and unhappy. Thank you, Sophie. I got the um, all the pieces about finding those moments when we became addicted or those, those moments when we decided to avoid something in life that really supported me today. So thank you very much. Yeah. You're so welcome. You know what we're going to do when we end the call? We're going to... Um, put the steps underneath oh that's a great idea that's a great idea right? great so idea yeah all right would you look if we have any uh, questions yes i comments? will i don't see any questions or comments but those of you that are here with us thank you we love having you here with us and never um you can either comment or ask questions below in the chat or as you can see i posted the link for asking questions for these calls on mondays Great. All right. I mean, we were a bit longer today. We were. It was a good conversation. I needed it. So thank you. <laughs> Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Have a good day.